Hello guys, today we are looking into the Parrot Learning Study by Irene Pepperberg and the study was carried out in 1987 at the Northwestern University, Illinois. This is a study that involves a single African grey parrot who was taught the concept of same and different, which is more of an abstract concept, right? So this parrot had been used in prior studies and it could already talk in, talk in English to get um, to make a request or refuse objects and it could identify more than 80 different objects. He could categorize the objects and use functional phrases like come here or say no or say I want this or that. But one of the cognitive capacities that was thought to be non-existent in non-primates was comprehension of same and different. It is more of an abstract concept, so Alex would be given two objects and he not only had to say if two items are similar, he had to identify what characteristic the same in these two objects. The idea was that it should not be a stimulus-specific association, which means that the concept should be able to be applied in novel situations too. We will look at this in more detail as we go further. So the main aim of this experiment is to see if an avian subject, which is an African gray parrot in this case, um, could use vocal labels to demonstrate symbolic comprehension of same and different, which means that when Alex is presented with two objects, he should be able to analyze various aspects of the object, understand the question that is asked to him, that is sometimes he'll be asked what is same in them or some other times he might be asked what is different in the objects that are shown. So then looking at the objects, um, Alex has to identify uh, what is same or what is different depending on the question and then produce the answer vocally. So it is a case study for it only had one particular subject and yet it was a very systematic and standardized study. Alex already knew a lot of colors before this particular experiment. He knew the colors green, red, blue, yellow and gray. He also knew a lot of uh, materials like paper, um, wood, um, hide, which is a kind of leather, cork and some metallic items like key, chain, etc. For shapes, he knew football shape, triangular, square, pentagonal forms. Um, and what he had to learn for this particular study is the vocalization of the material, of the word material, and he called it meh meh, that is how he pronounced it. Um, and he also was trained to respond to questions uh, of what is same or what is different with categorical labels. They, he had to respond either with material, color or shape and just not describe what the material is, uh, I mean the item is. Um, they also taught him two new colors which is purple and orange and they also included six-sided um, shapes into the experiment and he had to learn all of these things for this experiment alone. Uh, so, how was he trained in all of this? For general acquisition of, uh, of labels, Alex, uh, whenever he responded with the right label of an object, he was rewarded with the object itself. And if he didn't like that particular object, he could always ask for another alternative one and he would get it. So, the technique that was used to train Alex on what is same and what is different is called the MR approach or the model rival approach. There were two humans involved and one would demonstrate the other, um, you know, the desired behavior. So basically one human will act as a trainer presenting the objects to the second human and will ask what is same or what is different in these objects. And the trainer would give praises and rewards which would generally be both the objects will be given to the um, the other human if he responds with the right answer. And, you know, disapproval will be showed by removing the item whenever he says the wrong answer. So the second human generally act, you know, mostly acts as a model for Alex. At the same time, Alex finds him a rival 
and he tries to get the the other human's attention by giving the right answer first. So if Alex tells the right answer first, he would get the object and not the you know the model human. And you know if if he says the wrong answer, the object will be taken away from him. Then the role of the trainer and the model would be reversed. Um, if they want to introduce a new object at all, they would keep it on the shelf for a few days until Alex got used to it and the fear is reduced. Um, Alex also had the access uh, access to the whole laboratory whenever the researchers were present there. He would have water and seeds at all times and fresh fruits and some speciality nuts and toys were provided whenever he asked for it. And he generally asked for it like he could express I want this and that so he would ask for whatever he wanted so overall looking at it you can say that the animal was treated very ethically they trained him for about um, you know two to four times a week which lasted for about five to one hour five I mean five minutes to one hour whenever Alex showed some signs of boredom like preening or interrupting with comments like I want this or that um, they'd engage him. They always made sure that they engaged him in some other activities. So how did they do the testing is the next question. So the principal trainer had a list of all possible objects that could be tested and a student who was not involved in the study would randomly pick pairs of objects and this item would be assigned to questions uh, like what is same or what is different. Okay, it'll be like in random order. So neither Alex nor the trainer would know what question would come next. So the principal trainer would sit in one corner of the room and she would uh, sit with her back to the parrot and not looking at the parrot. And she'll ask question what is the same or what is dif different depending on what is in front of her. And someone else will show the objects to the parrot. And this must have reduced the researcher bias uh, to, you know, uh, to some extent. And it would have made the study a little bit more objective in nature. When he says the right answer, when, whenever Alex says the right answer, um, that is recorded. And if it's a wrong answer, the object would be removed and will be repeated again later um, until he learns it. Um, and what did they find from all this? Looking at the first trials alone, 69 out of 99 times Alex gave the correct response. That is, the correct response um, is when the first vocalization itself is right. Uh, for trials that contained characteristics that he could not label, for example, plastic, he still got like 13 out of 17 times he got the right answer. And out of those 13 trials, at least 10 times, he has uh, got the right answer the very first time itself. So it clearly shows that he is, you know, being able to identify or he has grasped that abstract nature um, of same and different. Uh, with Nobel objects, 79 out of 96 times he gave the correct response and also when both the objects are novel, he got around 30, 83% of the time he got the right answer. Um, and when only one object is novel, he got around 86% again. So this clearly shows how much he has attained or acquired that concept of same and different and he could use it in novel situations as well. So with this, we are wrapping up the experiment uh, by Irene Pepperberg. Uh, hope it helped and if you like please subscribe uh, to the channel. Thank you.